Way back when, academic life seemed so simple when comparing it to what we have now. In the sciences there were these disciplines of which the meaning was well understood. Physics, chemistry, mathematics, biology, medicine, just to name a few. Computer science was young and would be considered by many to remain in that state. In fact, it was generally thought that computer science was just a special track of mathematics. Applied mathematics, that is, not real mathematics, of course. It was a world of geeks, concentrating on databases, software engineering, computer systems, and hard theoretical stuff like algorithmic complexity and automata. But life was good, and most disciplines were doing well, gradually growing and becoming increasingly sophisticated. Even computer science wasn't doing so bad, and it didn't last very long until we were seeing real computer science departments emerge, separated from the mathematicians. The field was also moving forward. Next to what gradually became known as core computer science, new fields started to pop up. Of course, as they loved a good internal fight as well, no computer scientist ever defined what non-core computer science was. An important non-core computer science field was artificial intelligence. Nobody understood what these guys were doing, often including themselves. At the same time, nobody really foresaw that what they were doing was soon to become a major part of the core of modern computer science. By now, it has been recognized that what was once considered outside the core had moved into that core. Or better, the core moved and broadened, encapsulating topics such as evolutionary algorithms, automated reasoning, information retrieval, statistical model checking, complex systems and networks, and so on. So informatics, as it was also called, grew more. Strangely enough, the number of new students had always been relatively low, while at the same time everyone was yelling and screaming that we needed these ICT graduates. Ah well. But there was something else going on as well. These other sciences, be they from the natural sciences or humanities, were increasingly relying on computing facilities. Just as they often needed math to do their science, they were in a real need of using computers. And it didn't last long before they realized that they needed more than computers. They needed new stuff that could run on computers. That new stuff was what the computer scientists had always been studying. So these other folks started creating computer science groups. They didn't call them as such, but instead used words like digital humanities, e-psychology, and so on. That's where we stand as of today. About, I would say. Now coming to this point, let's make an attempt at predicting the future and look at two different scenarios. Here's the first scenario. The computer scientist picked up an old discussion of real and non-real computer science effectively placing everything these other scientists were doing as applied computer science. That not being real computer science, it could be safely dismissed as being quite irrelevant when considering the contributions to computer science, that is, the one with capital letters. However, it was strange that these applied computer sciences were doing so well. In fact, most of all these other sciences that were using computer stuff were doing very well and these digital centers, or e-science centers, or whatever they were called, were beginning to see the light of day everywhere. In the meantime, it was getting increasingly difficult for the original computer scientists to get students and funding. And at a certain point, the real computer science building needed to be downsized. It was just too big. Weird. Especially considering the size of these non-real computer science buildings. If things didn't change quickly, the real computer scientists would have to see the provost and demand to be the only scientists allowed to do computer science. Who do these other guys think they were anyway? They lost. What about this scenario? The computer scientists realized, together with many scientists from other fields, that the times were really changing. Where there used to be science X with a big X, researchers were starting to talk about computational X. Computational physics, computational biology, computational chemistry, computational economics, computational law, computational linguistics, computational social sciences, computational psychology. So what to do? For one, folks teamed up and started NEW Sciences, with capital letters of course. They built a new campus with computer science in the middle. Now the big danger, as everyone realized, 
was that if everyone just went on as before, it was never going to work. In particular, the informatics folks had some work to do. They made sure to be there where the new action was, with the social scientists teaming up to understand these massive amounts of data on demographics. With the medical centers, where computational methods were introduced to understand the working of the brain, but also so many other issues related to what was known as e-health. They were close to experts on sustainable energy, realizing that computer science was at the core of their problems and solutions. They teamed up with the gaming industry, and in fact, for outsiders, it was difficult to see the difference between games and computer science as also happened to be the case for the next generation of new real computer scientists, by the way. Researchers from the old law school and the old computer science building were now developing new laws for handling nasty issues on security and privacy, and at the same time researching systems that could enforce these new laws in symbiosis with people. A complete new building was erected to study sports and computations, where sportsmen and women were continuously monitored and dynamically incentivized to work optimally in teams. And hey, there was even this new science on computational mathematics and philosophy, forming the foundations of what was gradually becoming known as the new computational thinking. There were so many opportunities that computer scientists from various groups could never grab all of them. They had to make choices. But that was all right. The good news was that new sciences were flourishing and the old computer sciences were there, rejuvenated and very much driving the changes that would make these new sciences successful. And gradually many of them left the old sciences for what they were. <laughs>